Good evening. God bless you. Truly, it is a pleasure to be with you here in the midweek service, our Bible class, that is known as our praise and study hour. Truly, I thank God for being with you on tonight as we begin this season of learning and sharing and fellowshipping on a Wednesday night in our midweek. I hope you've been enjoying your summer up to this point as we wind it down. Regrettably, I love the summer, as I told the church Sunday morning. Love summer, I love the heat. But as we move on through the year, it's time for other things, as life does, for every season to come and go. And so, with the closing down of summer, our Bible class resumes again, and here we are for another season of learning. Truly, I hope you have decided already to be a faithful uh, attendee of our praise and study hour. We're still virtual. Uh, we're only in the building on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. And so I hope you plan on joining me every week here, right here at 6 p.m. on Wednesday nights for our praise and study hour. Come equipped with your word. Come equipped with your Bible apps, on your phone, your iPad, notepad, and pencil. However it is you learn the best, come join me. And let's worship and study the word of God together on Wednesday night. So tonight, as we go into the word, we want to begin in the right way. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Then we'll get into our lesson and head in that direction. Will you pray with me? Father God, we thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy. Lord, we thank you for all you've done. You are a mighty God. You're great in all your ways and we love you. We praise you. We worship you. Lord, we come magnifying your name because you're worthy of all our praise. And we bestow that upon you. Even on a Wednesday night, you're still worthy to be praised. So, Father God, we ask before we do go any further that you forgive us of our sins. We praise you because you've set a standard. You've set the banner. And, Lord, we have come short of your glory. We have all sinned. And so I ask that you forgive us now and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that you would wash and cleanse our hearts with your son Jesus' blood, that we'll be made whiter than snow. Lord, our sins are great, our sins are many, and I ask that you look beyond our faults and see every one of our needs. Bless us as only you can, as only you know how. Lord, we thank you for your mercy, for your mercy demanded justice, or justice demanded death, Father God, but your mercy said no, give them another chance. And I thank you for your grace that you just keep on blessing us in spite of our wrongs. You keep giving us what we don't deserve. And so, Father God, we ask that you bless us as you know how. Lord, make up any shortage, make up any lack. I pray tonight that as we open your word, that you speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, speak through me, your teacher. Give me a teaching anointing tonight to teach to your people. Give the church itching ears to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. I ask that you bless your word tonight. Give it voice. Give it life. Give us direction. Guide our paths. The Lord be a lamp unto our feet. I'm praying for all those on our sick and shut-in list, our grief list. Lord, I pray for every individual tonight. Lord, I'm praying, Lord, that you would heal, that you would deliver, and that you would set free. Give them strength tonight. I pray, Father God, for each and every individual. Praying, Father God, for Sister Turner, Mother Wright. Father God, praying for uh, Mother Cole. Praying tonight for Brother Dotson, Sister Reed. I ask, Lord, that you'll see about all these individuals and heal them tonight. Then, Lord, I pray that you bless our church. Bless New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. Help us to grow in grace. Help us to grow in word. Help us to grow in number. Lord, I pray that you bless us and help us to be whatever it is you want us to be. I give you praise for how we are today, how we've made it so thus far through a pandemic, how you've kept us, how you've blessed us, how you've allowed us to, pro pro to progress even in the time of pandemic, prospering in this era. We thank you, Lord. We give you the praise. Bless our coming together tonight as we open your word for our praise and study hour. I pray that you would just help us to grow in faith, increase our faith. Lord, we pray that after this word and after we end it, this virtual session, that many will go forth and become faithful witnesses for Christ. I pray for every individual that's tuned in tonight. Thank you for them. Lord, I pray, Lord, for finances. I pray for uh, health. I pray for strength. I pray for prosperity. 
Lord, I pray for families that might be having it rough, that, Lord, you would make the rough place smooth. Lord, I pray that you would bless our children as they've gone back to school. We're praying for our world today. Lord, we're praying for the Gulf Coast as Ida's coming up and praying for Haiti, earthquakes, praying for Afghanistanian people today. Lord, praying for our president, praying for our governors and our mayors. Lord, we know that the world system is in your control and you rule and you super rule. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We, your people, we hear, we shall obey what thus saith the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Is our prayer. Amen and thank God. Again, I thank God for you for tuning in. I just want to welcome you into this uh, virtual, spiritual, sacred space called our Prayers of Study Hour. Uh, welcome New Jerusalem members in. Thank God for you, all of our visitors. Thank God for you tuning in and being with us on tonight. Thank you so very much and bless you. And join us again. Make yourself at home. If you don't have a church home tonight, I would highly recommend the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. God bless you. Now, let's get into our word on tonight. Hey, bad. If you have your Bible tonight, we don't want to bear your patience uh, being our first time here. We don't want to shock your system too much coming off a, a month long break. We don't want to bear your patience on tonight. If you got your Bible, your app, whatever it is you use for the word of God. Thank you for joining with me wherever you are, whether you're at home in the living room or uh, you're laying in the bed from a long day at work or maybe you're at work listening through headphones as you run down a trail trying to stay in shape. However it is you join us, God bless you. Uh, we want to go to the book of Jeremiah, Old Testament prophet of Jeremiah. If you would meet us there, uh, I believe God has a mighty word for us on tonight as we go into this season of Bible class. Jeremiah, you'll see on your screen the 26th chapter. And... Uh, our lesson is going to cover the first 15 verses of Jeremiah, the 26th chapter. But we want to read in your hearing on tonight, just verses 8 through verse 15. Jeremiah, 26th chapter, verse 8 through verse 15. As you see on your screen, our subject on tonight, don't kill the messenger. Please don't kill the messenger. Don't kill me. <laughs> don't kill the messenger. Again, we're in Jeremiah, the 26th chapter, verse 8 through verse 15 on tonight. Jeremiah was a major prophet in the Old Testament. And as a major prophet, he was sent to wake up the people of God children of Israel, they had fallen out with God. 
They turned on God and began worshiping false gods. So God needed a man by the name of Jeremiah to go preach a message of repentance and to preach a message of the law. Let's go into our scripture on tonight. Jeremiah 26th chapter, verse 8 through verse 15. Now it came to pass when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak unto all the people, that the priests and the prophets and all the people took him, saying, Thou shalt surely die. Why hast thou prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant? And all the people, were gathered against Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the princes of Judah heard these things, then they came up from the king's house unto the house of the Lord and sat down in the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house. Then spake the priests and the prophets unto the princes and to all the people, saying, This man is worthy to die, for he hath prophesied against this city, as ye have heard with your ears. Then spake Jeremiah unto all the princes and to all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city all the words that ye have heard. Therefore, now amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will repent him of the evil that he hath pronounced against you. As for me, behold, I am in your hand. Do with me as seemeth good and meet unto you. But know ye for certain that if ye put me to death, ye shall surely bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and upon the inhabitants thereof. For a truth, the Lord hath sent me unto you to speak all these words in your ears. Don't kill the messenger. There is a saying that is heard frequently. Our subject, don't kill the messenger. What it means is whatever the messenger is delivering, it's not their fault because it's not their message. If you don't like the message, then go to its source and take it out on that source. That is the way it was with the prophet Jeremiah found in our text. Countless times he was treated as if he were the author of his message, and the reaction was usually anger, hostility, and even threats on his life. Once he was beaten and put into stocks, Somebody know of that, although in the following verses following today's Old Testament lesson we read in your hearing, Jeremiah does escape death. At the end of the chapter, another prophet of the Lord carrying the same message, watch this church, was put to death by the king. Later, the king destroyed Jeremiah's manuscript of prophecies so that he had to start all over again to write them down. Another time, he was thrown down into a cistern and fortunately was not filled with water and was left there for some days. It was enough to make Jeremiah want to get out of the business. Even he hated the message (laughs) that he 
had to bring because it was one of such terrible destruction. In fact, he pleaded with the Lord to release him. Like Job, he despised the day that he was born. He had the message to tell and he had no other option. He found himself unable to hold back the word of the Lord. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, when people get upset at someone who has told them something they didn't like to hear, didn't want to hear, the person will sometimes respond with, don't kill the messenger. Sometimes that means, look, I'm just a spokesperson. Your quarrel isn't with me, but with the person who sent me and gave me the message. Take it up with them if you want to. I did not create this problem. I have merely told you the truth about the problem and am attempting to silence me won't make that truth go away. Jeremiah, the writer of our text, was a major prophet in the Old Testament. He was sent to wake up the people of God. The children of Israel were falling away from the Lord God. They began to worship false gods. So the Lord sent Jeremiah to preach a message of repentance and to preach a message of the law. It was so bad, in fact, that he only had one word from the message that he had to proclaim. Jeremiah came and proclaimed that there were certainly going to face doom and destruction. In our text for examination on a Wednesday night, we have a case in which people very literally wanted to kill the messenger. This text before us tonight begins to unfold some time into the ministry of the prophet Jeremiah. Pious king Josiah has died, and after the very brief reign of Jehoahaz, wicked Jehoiakim is now king. As is often the case, as the leader went, so did the followers. King Jehoiakim was wicked, and so the people of Israel became wicked. God saw this and sent Jeremiah to go into the temple courts, into a high traffic area, so many people would hear him and speak a message to the people. Jeremiah is told to speak for God and to say, if you don't listen to me and follow my law, which I have set before you, and if you do not listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I have sent to you again and again, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh and this city an object of cursing among all the nations of the earth. Isn't this the reason that people sometimes want to kill the messenger? Because they bring such miserably harsh, confrontational messages. Jeremiah's message was one of confrontation and accusation charging the Israelites with reportedly failing to obey God's law and repeatedly refusing to listen to his words when spoken through the prophets. These words had to sting, and I doubt very much Jeremiah smiled when he had to say them. Jeremiah's message was very different. It was a different message than the you're all okay with God type message 
you're all okay with God because you're his chosen people. And it's no wonder that God chose you since you're such good people anyway, which was the message coming from all of the false prophets at that time. As you might imagine, this wasn't well received by the people and especially by the chief priests and the other false prophets. They, de they decided to literally kill the messenger, saying, you must die. But listen to the reason they give for this. This man should be sentenced to death because he has prophesied against this city. What an interesting, interesting charge, don't you think? He isn't charged with blasphemy or even with lying. They do not say you must die because you're telling lies. Instead, they charge amounts to your words made me feel bad. You hurt my feelings. The Jews of Jeremiah's time would have fit perfectly in today's society. For there is a greater crime that can be committed in today's America than to hurt somebody's feelings by speaking the truth of God's law to them. I say hardly. Such people must be silenced and condemned for hate speech. But it's not just those people out there who respond in this way to God's messengers. We also are tempted to act and have in fact acted just as the Israelites did when God sent Jeremiah to speak to them. When the Lord sends a pastor to, tells us, to tell us that it's a sin to despise God's word by failing to regularly hear it, we say, or at least think, I've been a member of this church a lot longer than he has. When the Lord sends a deacon to tell us that if we continue to live impenitently in a particular sin, we will be under God's judgment. Aren't we tempted to think, wow, was he rude? I can't believe the tone of the voice he used with me. When the Lord sends a family member to tell us that so long as we keep on exaggerating our expense account at work, we are living in sin. Sin for which God will damn us to hell. Aren't we tempted to think like they've never sinned before? A prophet's life was not an easy one, brothers and sisters. Being a prophet was a calling from the Lord and probably an unwelcome one at that. Let's do a roll call. Can I call a few witnesses tonight just for a few minutes to press my claim? Can I press my claim? In all probability, rather than pronouncing judgment upon Israel and Judah, the prophet Amos, I'm going to call him first, would have preferred going back to his sheep and fig trees. Nevertheless, he accepted God's call. Seen as a traitor and conspirator, he was tortured. Elijah had to flee from the wrath of Jezebel. John the Baptist was beheaded. Micaiah was tossed into prison for predicting the death of Ahab and Israel's defeat. Daniel was thrown into, you know it, a lion's den. Jonah, come on Bible readers, spent some time in the belly of a great fish. The king of Aram blamed Elisha for his troubles and wanted him beheaded. Rabbinical tradition has it that King Manasseh executed Isaiah by having him sewn in half, Jeremiah 
tasked with delivering an unpopular and convicting message tonight ended up depressed and cursed by his own family, beaten, arrested, and dropped into a mudder and muddy cistern. These prophets were popular because they fearlessly told the truth instead of what the people wanted to hear. They revealed the people's sins and warned of their consequences. The prophets weren't all gloom and doom. Woven through their words of warning and judgment were words of hope, renewal, and redemption. In spite of that, much of what they said was ignored. Let's face it, reproach, significance, repentance were never, never popular messages. They were sent to confront rather than comfort. Their messages were often unwelcomed and ignored. What those who persecuted them failed to realize is that while they may have temporarily silenced the men's voices, the truth of their messages did not disappear. Not everything we read in the Bible is going to be comforting and cheerful. It is, however, true. Not everything we hear from the pulpit is going to give us a warm and fuzzy feeling. But if we have a good Bible-based pastor preacher, it needs to be heard. Not everything the Holy Spirit tells us is going to be approving but it will be edifying. Not everything God instructs us to do will be easy, but I guarantee you it will be worthwhile. Not everything said by our brothers and sisters in Christ will ever be appreciated, but hopefully it will be honest. God gives warnings so we won't have to suffer his wrath. Rather than ignoring, persecuting, or killing God's messengers, we would be better off listening to them and heeding their words. Jeremiah said to all the officials and all the people, the Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city. All the things you have heard. Now reform. Reform your ways and your actions. And obey the Lord your God. Watch this church. Then the Lord will repent. And not bring the disaster. He has pronounced against you. As for me. I'm in your hands. Do with me whatever you think is good and right. But hold on, be assured that if you put me to death, you will bring the guilt of innocent blood. I haven't left the text, I mean your Bible, on yourselves and on this city and on all those who live in it. For in truth, the Lord has sent me to speak all these words in your hearing. All too often, church, we think if we find some way to attack the messenger, it makes the message automatically invalid. But when the message comes from God, what we think about the messenger, whether we would like to think he was rude, whether he actually was rude, whether they are beyond reproach, whether they committed enough sin in their past to make even the apostle Paul reconsider 
whether he has been replaced as what he called the chief of sinners, whether the messenger is so wet behind the ears that he spent fewer years alive than you spent in the working real world, whether the messenger is so old and out of touch that they think a search engine is a type of train. When the message comes from God, none of what we think about the messenger matters. Amen, church. When the message comes from God, the message stands on its own, for it is the truth, and we might grumble, and we might complain, but we can rejoice in the fact that God's word does not change because it is simply God's word and it stands by itself. And as believers, we are given the privilege to have understanding that the Bible is God's word and whatever God's word says is true. We are thankful for that. Paul tells in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. And we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, Paul said, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. We're thankful that God's word remains the same. We are thankful that God's word is at work in each one of us. We're thankful that it is not the word of men, but the word of God. Let me digress for a few minutes. When we Christians bring a message and claim that is from God, let us be 100% sure that it is indeed taken from the Holy Scriptures. I am so perturbed by all these preachers, prophets, pastors, even musicians proclaiming, God told me to tell you. Can I just say, no, he didn't. No, he did not. You need to stop playing with God. We had better be able to tell our hearers that if they have a quarrel with us, they really have a quarrel with God. We had better be able to tell our hearers that we have spoken God's words and not our own words. If we present as God's word something that God has not actually said, if we cannot say thus says the Lord, or as Jeremiah said, the Lord has sent me to you to speak all these words, then we are no better than the false prophets that were present at the time of Jeremiah. But when we pastors, church school teachers, parents, spouses, Christian friends, speak from God's word, then we can confidently and authoritatively say with Jeremiah, the Lord has sent me to speak all these words. When we hear God's messengers, whether they be a pastor, an elder, or simply a concerned friend or spouse, whether or not we disregard their message, the warnings in that message are still true because they come from God. Therefore, let us not quarrel with that message. For to quarrel with a message sent from God is to quarrel with God himself. Let us instead hear their call to repentance and let us humble ourselves before the Lord. 
May we confess the times we have neither followed his law nor heeded the words of those he sends to call us to repentance. May we confess that we deserve to be punished for our sin, both now and in eternity. And to refuse to do those things, to refuse to heed to sure warnings of God's messengers, I need to tell you would be tragic because it would condemn us to eternal death in hell, eternal suffering in hell, eternal separation from God. To ignore God's messengers will be doubly tragic because not only do they bring God's sure warnings, but they also bring God's sure promises. In the end, that's why God sends his messengers to speak his word, that we might heed their warnings and their calls to repent. And that we might then also hear and believe their promises. God does not announce his condemnation of and his punishment for sin to people because he wants them to suffer it, but because he wants them to repent and avoid it. God's message of the law has not changed. I'm, I'm done. We, we don't like to hear the law either. It does sting and hurt. It reminds us as we come before God, we have nothing to offer him at all but our sins. As we look at the holiness of God, we should see our imperfectness, our ungodliness, our evil thoughts our wicked words, and our sinful actions. The law tells us that time and time and time again, there are none righteous. Come on, help me. No, not one. The law reminds us we are sinners. It makes us aware that we sin daily and we sin much. The law cannot save us because The law condemns. That is the message that comes from God's word. There are those who would try to avoid the message of the law by closing their eyes and running away from it. Yet the law finds them out. And the law says doing the law cannot save us. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It it is not pleasant to hear the law. But until we hear the law and until we understand that we cannot stand on our own before God. Until we understand that. We cannot appreciate. The gospel. We need to see that we cannot help ourselves that we cannot save ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot do enough good works. We can't buy our way into heaven and we can't even pray our way into heaven. The Lord saves us by his grace. He saves us by the comfort of his gospel. And we appreciate that when we understand just how low we've gone because of our sinfulness. But God raises us up with the healing of his gospel. This is God's gospel that heals us, which lifts us up, that moves us then to change our lives, to change our heart. No longer do we find it so appealing to live in the sinfulness of this world and satisfy just our own desires. No longer do we want to fulfill lusts that lurk in our sinful hearts. Instead, because of God's gospel, we're motivated to live lives of love that lead to salvation. We look out for one another. 
we are concerned about our fellow man and we realize that no matter how much we sin, the Lord invites us to come and find forgiveness. Yes, the law stings. It hurts. It condemns us. But then the gospel lifts us up. It heals us. It saves us by his grace. That's my time tonight. But if you receive that, you've been saved by the grace of God. I want to offer you a chance to be saved on a Wednesday night tonight. The law condemns. The law puts you before you. It shows you yourself. But the gospel then lifts us up out of that sin, out of that past, out of our mistakes, out of our habits. If you've logged on tonight, if you're not saved, you don't have salvation, you don't have Jesus as a part of your sin, I want to offer Christ to you today. If you've never been baptized, I want you to send me an email to njmbc168 at gmail.com. And in the email, type the word salvation. And we will get back with you. If you're looking for a church home tonight, send an email to the same address, njmbc168 at gmail.com. And if you would just type in your email, membership, we will reach back out to you and count you as one of our homes. God bless you tonight. Hope and trust that you are blessed and helped by the word of God. As we talked about, don't kill the messenger. We know that it is the mouth of man that's used as earthen vessels to deliver God's word. But it is not that man who gave the message. He's just dropping off the mail. He is God's mailman. So the quarrel with him quarrel with her, you're quarreling, you're quarreling with God. Receive his word, even if it's convicting, even if it stings, receive it. The Bible tells us the word is supposed to cut. It's a two-edged sword, piercing even his Sunday soul. The word cuts coming and going. As the messenger of God, it cut me first in study. It cuts me in delivery. But when you hear it, it cuts you. It's cutting both of us. We both cut individuals. So don't go hurting and quarreling against somebody else who's been cut. A lot of times we don't want to preach this message. We don't want to say that. We don't want to do that. A lot of times it causes you to be politically incorrect. We don't want to do that. But God wants his word to go forth. And his word will not be hindered. And it will not return void either. His word must go forth on tonight. God bless you. Thank you for being with us on tonight. Before we go, I want to give you time and a chance to give and bless the Lord. We're asking tonight that if you were negligent in giving your tithe and your offering on Sunday, that you would take the time and write up your tithe or do all that right now. We ask that you would be faithful in giving of your tithe and your offering, even if on Wednesday nights we're not in the wall even if we're not even having our church school at this moment uh, the only time we're in the building is on Sunday mornings I'm still asking that you would be mature enough a saint of God, a child of God that you realize that he has blessed you and that you ought to give God a portion of that in return as a show of gratitude I hope you said thank you I really hope you're a grateful individual I hope you thank God for all the many blessings he has given to you, but to express gratitude is your tithe as well as your offering. And on tonight, if you tuned in tonight, I'm asking that you would bless the kingdom with $20 on tonight. If you would just give an offering, try God, trust in God, and just give and bless the Lord on tonight. Here's how you give. You see on your screen, there are four ways that we give here at New Jerusalem. You can tithe and give your offering uh, tonight by sending it through the mail dropping it off uh, at 168 Prospect Street, Pontiac, Michigan, 48341. 
If you're comfortable giving that way, we ask that you do it in that manner. God will bless you. Then we do have the ability to give, for you to give online if you're moved into a cashless society as many have in 2021. We've got various ways you can give that way. You'll see three on the screen. First is a cash app. Our mnemonic is dollar sign N J M D C 168. Very easy way of giving, very fast and quick. You can also give online at our website, which many of you are watching through tonight at njmdc168.org. Find the online giving tab on the home screen. You can also find the Givelify tab as well there. We ask that you be faithful giving. You can't beat God giving, no matter how hard you try. That's our prayer on tonight. God will bless you. Press down, shake together. And running over shall men give into your bosom. That's how his blessings come. You'll have more than enough. It'll be sweatless. It'll be effortless. It'll be sweet. God bless you. Let's ask God to bless our gifts on tonight. Father God, we thank you for how you've been in the past. We thank you for what you're doing right now. We look forward to how you're going to bless us in the future. So you're right. Amen. Come on, church. It's offering time. Bless the Lord. This is my prayer that the worship that we've experienced together and the word you just received has once again encouraged and created a faith in you that is greater than any fear. As a matter of fact, if you're watching this broadcast and you are moved to walk in faith, surrender your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ for the very first time, or maybe reconnect yourself in your walk with the Lord, do me a favor. Send us an email to njmbc168 at gmail.com and I and one of our preachers will reach out back to you and joyfully share with you God's perfect plan of salvation for your life. If you're moved to be a part of something bigger than yourself during this time of isolation, I pray that you realize how important community is. And if you desire to be a part of the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church community on our website, you'll find all the information that you need about our church. We want you to contact us so we can contact and connect with you. That way we can build a relationship that we may count you as one of our own. If you are a member of New Jerusalem Baptist Church and are in need of anything at all, especially resources or prayer, once again, reach out to the church during this time of isolation. We want every member to know that we are deeply intimately and prayerfully concerned about you and your family. Reach out to us that we may continue to reach out to you. As we get ready to say goodbye today, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. If you were blessed by the word of God, do me a favor, sign on and subscribe to our Facebook and to our YouTube channel that you may be kept informed of all our worship, all our announcements, and all our activities. If you've been blessed, Remember that we are still seeking to be a blessing. We're still ministering to our community. We are still caring for our youth and our seniors. And I'm asking you to be faithful in your gifts of God. At New Jerusalem, we don't believe in begging for anything. We believe that if you would pray and ask God what you should do financially, if you obey what God places upon your heart, the church can't help but to be blessed. Hey, this is Pastor Robertson. We're looking forward to being with you in worship again on next time. Log in anytime you can. Together we might continue to worship of a God who is worthy. The Lord bless and keep thee. The more make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. May the road rise and meet you. May the wind be at your back. May the sunshine warm your face. May the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again. May he hold you in the palm of his hand. God bless you. Have a great week.